Yeah, I think that's all wonderful advice. Thank you guys so much. Um, and then the last um, question would be, what advice would you give those who plan to study abroad? So any and all advice that you guys have. Um, Chloe? Uh, there's a lot of advice I would give. Um, a lot of things I would do differently also if I were to study abroad again, but my general advice, I guess, would be to plan, plan ahead, like Meg was saying earlier. Um, and my tip personally from my experience would be to find a program that fits you and your interests. I didn't want like a French literature, solely French language program. Um, I didn't I was going to apply to the program in Avignon because um, Dr. Lewis really recommended it to me, but I didn't quite want it to be solely French. I had my double major and I was looking to do other things. So I'm glad that I got the international studies experience and like the visits to you know, the UN and things like that because those have helped me more in my personal career um, right now and in grad school. So I think find a program that has like the language aspect that you want, but also if it has additional things, you know, if you have a double major, if you're in science, find some way to tie it to what you're interested in um, and make sure that, you know, it fits what you need to graduate and such. But that's a good way to um, keep it focused on you, but you will likely be more interested in it that way and find it more enjoyable. Um. I think my simplest piece of advice would be to, you know, if, in UC160, more often than not, they have you make your four-year plan, do it. Um, even if it's like, oh, I'm, I'm already in my sophomore year. Okay, still make your four-year plan, factor in what you've already done, what you still want to do. And from there, you know, sort of plan out how you're going to, in what order you're going to do everything so that you can do your study abroad in a semester. And if you can't do it in, during a semester, then consider putting in the investments to do it over the summer if you're still gung-ho on uh, you know, studying abroad in the first place. Because I think it is definitely a worthwhile investment. You get additional credits for it, um, but it also grants you the opportunity to see more of the world to experience more of a given of the language that you're learning and the culture that you're learning about um so you know even if it's over the summer i would definitely recommend you know even if it's m more money it's a worthwhile investment i would say because this is something that i didn't really do and i regret it is to go for as long as possible somewhere else and also as much as possible which i tried to do um, I think that while I was in college, I was very wrapped up in like, oh, I'm running track and I'm doing a sorority and I, I need to be here. And I need, like, when I think back on my time in college, I think most like dearly and happily about the time I spent in France. Um, and I loved my time at OU. So this is no, like, this is nothing to do with being on campus. I loved all of it, but I, my best memories are from my time abroad. So push yourself, get out there because soon you're going to graduate and you're going to have a job. And even if your job is, is abroad, you're not going to be able to go anywhere else because you're working. And um, this is just such an incredible time to take advantage of all the programs that OU has to offer because there are so many. Um, talk to us, like reach out to us anytime if you need anything. Um, Dr. Cusato, I think, is that she changed her name? Maybe, yes, um, is an amazing resource. She will sit down with you. And I, Chloe, I know can attest to this. She, if you think you can't go abroad, she will find a way for you to get abroad, um, 100%. So if you need inspiration, if you need a pep talk, go see her because she'll get you there. Um, thank you for the, that in the chat. Yes, um, so that is my advice. You got this, all right? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, just to echo what everybody else said, I think it's just important to go and um, especially to go if you're nervous. Um, I think just getting out and getting your first step out is extremely important. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't have all that much advice other than to just go and try to be different. Um, I personally have never loved doing things the way they're supposed to be done. Um, and that's got me in lots of interesting situations, but it also got me abroad for a year when people told me I couldn't. And it's also gotten me to Berlin when people said, don't do it. Um, so if you can possibly find a way to do something you have this crazy dream to do, 
do it. I mean, don't, don't let anybody to tell you no. Um, it, it's all possible. That's the biggest thing. Also going back to my answer from earlier, um, cause, uh, it kind of just clicked in my head that, you know, money might be a barrier for some people, uh, to study abroad. Studying abroad is definitely a lot cheaper to do over a semester, um, it, by comparison. Um, but if you're do if your best bet is to do it over the summer and money is an issue, try focusing in on programs that offer some form of financial aid. Um, you know, the Avignon program that Megan and I did, you know, they, they offered financial aid. Sometimes it might not be, a, it might not be a lot, quote unquote, but like if they shave off a couple thousand dollars off your total bill, that's a couple thousand dollars you, you, you saved. Um, and if you're like me, that, that definitely helps out a lot in the long run. So definitely if money is a barrier, try to focus in on programs that do offer some form of financial aid. And if they off, don't offer you as much as you need in order to afford it, it never hurts to inquire about what the possibility is to maybe get additional financial aid. Um, you know, just explain the situation and they might be very, more often than not, they might be willing to help you out if you got accepted, especially if you got accepted into the program and they know that you're a great student for the program. I'm sure that more often than not, they'll, not, they'll be able to help you out in some way. I also just wanted to jump in. Um, this is not super relevant right now, given the pandemic, unfortunately. Um, but I have a brother who's three years younger than I am, and he has a different perspective on studying abroad than I do. He kind of always wanted to and never found the time, so he just hasn't. But what I've been telling him for years is that there are other options other than a study abroad program. If life just seems so overwhelming that it's not possible. I mean, take a summer off and do a woofing or look at work away, or there are a lot of platforms out there like couch surfing or yeah, like Meg just sent um, the Gilman scholarship. Uh, personally, a lot of my traveling, I have like a $0 budget always and especially at the moment. Um, but most of my traveling has been workaways. Where you go, you paint for four hours a day and you like live with this family and you get to explore a country and a language and meet people you never would have otherwise. So if study abroad isn't necessarily an option, go some other way. Like find two weeks, find a month, find six months and just figure it out. All right. Um, so those are all of the questions I have for you guys. So I'd love to open it up to the audience and see if anyone has any questions. If you want to raise your hands or just speak out. Uh, so my name is Malou. Um, I am a sophomore at OU. I also play field hockey. So this is for Megan. Um, um, and I'm from Canada, so I'm currently in Canada right now. I'm doing online school. Um, and I heard what you said earlier saying that in France it's often helpful to be from Canada. So could you explain that? I know like for the Quebecois side and that, but I'm from Ontario, so it's kind of different. Like we don't speak that much in Ontario and the other provinces. So could you like elaborate on that? Yeah, absolutely. So I come from a long line of cousins who have all studied French and one of them studied French at Dalhousie, which, you know, I can't remember where exactly in Canada that is, but he went through Dalhousie to a lot of programs in France and he said it was so much easier for him to make friends um, coming from a Canadian institution, just because yeah. there is such a, there's such a connection. Um, yeah. And I can't speak to it because I'm not Canadian between French and France and Canada. Um, that just the US doesn't have. So when you meet someone and you know, they know you're American, they're gonna ask you a lot of questions and assume some stuff about you that you may not, <laughs> you may not love. Um, but I just think, and I've always thought after watching my cousin Johnny experience this, that that connection is so powerful and so cool. Um, so how lucky you are to be able to experience that firsthand. <laughs> Thank you. I also have one more question, I guess, before anyone puts their hands up in. So um, I'm also a double major for French and exercise science, which is a science. I know a lot of you don't speak um, to that, but um, I was wondering if you have any advice because 
of course, that major has a lot of like prerequisites and stuff like that I need. And sadly, freshman year, I wasn't able to get a lot of them in and go for those classes, even though I'm doing that right now. But if you have any advice and trying to like cram it all in, because you're all saying like a semester is like hopefully the best thing to go for. And it sounds so cool. And I love traveling. So if you have any advice for me. <laughs> I can go, I guess. Um, generally speaking, I am happy that I didn't do a semester. Um, I'm glad that I got the time to like play my sport and you know be involved in my sorority and do my other things on campus and um, study my international business major. Um, so if a summer you think would be good for you, I mean, I definitely recommend a summer program. It's not obviously the the length of time that is best or what most people would recommend but um, if that is truly what would work for your schedule I think it's still a great experience to get over there um, and if that would be the case then plan ahead apply for scholarships or whatever you can um, and just like bring it up with maybe like an advisor or professors to get on that as early as you can so that way you can map out your schedule as far in advance as you can to try and fit in that study abroad like um, a couple other people were saying just I guess start now to look at when you could, um, even if you could fit in a whole semester, I think just like start planning as soon as you think like, oh, I might want to do this. That way you can like jump on it and get ahead. Yeah, I just, I didn't have to deal with this personally, but I have friends who had similar situations. Look specifically for programs that are, that might have some overlapping classes. I don't know what the exercise science major is at all, but I have a friend who, not an OU friend, but a different friend who did like computer engineering and ended up in this program that went to CERN, I think is this nuclear something in France. Um, and she had a great semester and was able to like figure out how the classes in her French program worked into her major. Um, I don't know how that works personally, but I know there are lots of different programs out there even beyond what the OUSA might have, just like Google, spend a lot of time Googling. Um, and in my experience, OU was extremely accepting of outside programs if you find something that fits for you. So give it a go. You could also think about a theory to practice grant. Maybe you wanna know like what exercise science looks like. I'm thinking about France because you've talked about France. Um, you know, I actually, one of my italki tutors, she is in exercise science in France. Um, and so maybe you could go and do something, an internship over the summer or something that would get fully funded by OWU, which would be amazing. Um, I, I honestly, I don't know much about exercise science, but there are so many opportunities and maybe you could even team up with a professor or a classmate and do something with them. Um, definitely there are like, there are lots of avenues. You just, you do have to like, you kind of have to go find them, um, which you know this. <laughs> I have a question. And I saw um, Professor Raleigh's um, thing. I just want to acknowledge I saw that. Um, I have a question. It's kind of directed towards um, Sarah because you said that you studied abroad in two locations. Um, so right now I'm like kind of just thinking about where I want to go. Um, and I'm taking Chinese as like my language choice, um, but I'm also an international studies major um, along with environmental science and like the, the pre-law track. Um, so I guess I'm trying to figure out, like, I've thought about doing, like, a six-week program in China for, like, language skills, but then going to, like, a European country for a, sem for a semester um, to get more of, like, the international studies experience. So did you, like, did you find that useful going to two locations to kind of satisfy both parts of your major interest? Yeah, for sure. The difference with me is that both of them were in Europe, and I focus on European foreign policy. So... In your case, I mean, I can't see the harm in it, to be honest, um, the more the merrier in my opinion. Although it might be interesting to spend more time in one place or at least more time in places that are close enough to each other that you could go back and forth. Because in my experience, it was nice to be able to call Paris like temporary home and go back and visit the places that I knew so well while I was still in Brussels. Um, I don't know, maybe you can find some program that's still in the Asian continent. Um, 
I know a couple of policy schools, like for my master's programs that have uh, partnerships with the European kids here. So it is possible to study like European affairs in Asia. I know it sounds kind of counterintuitive, but there are schools out there. Thank you. Um, hi, I'm Emma. I have a question for you guys. So I don't really know. I think it kind of applies to everybody, but one of you were ta was talking about how you went and studied abroad in um, like Europe, and I want to do international studies too. And you were saying how you one of you had like experience at the UN, I believe. So I was wondering if you guys could talk a little bit more about that and like your experience with like um, the UN and like other governments type of like that and like what you can learn from that experience. That was me. Um, I was in Geneva, Switzerland for six weeks um, in 2016, same time as Meg. Um, so part of our, it was broadly international studies and multilateral diplomacy. That was the um, overall title of my program. So we had like language courses um, in the afternoons, but in the mornings for the first couple of weeks of our program, we would either have a lecture by one of our um, like program professors, I guess, or program coordinators. Um, and additionally, we would go a couple times a week to different places in Geneva. So we went to the UN a couple times. Um, we all got library cards so we could like work at the UN library um, and do, you know, use their resources and computers and books and stuff for our projects. Um, we also went to, oh man, we went a couple places. We passed UNHCR. We went to a few. It's been, it feels like it's been forever now, but um, I can definitely get more information I think they've changed the program a bit since I left but I think that that was pretty helpful we got like lectures while we were there um, you know from people in the field we had a couple presentations um, I think virtually um, from people who were I think outside of Switzerland as well but that was probably my favorite part was getting to go to the UN having free reign um, you know to the library and stuff because even while the, you were there you know you could attend any of like the meetings that were open to the to the public per se but to everyone that had access inside um so you could go there were a couple lectures i attended at like a nearby institution um so i think geneva itself and like the things going on at the un were really interesting because you could kind of tailor your projects and what you were interested in so you could go get you know additional information hear from speakers who you might know who are in the area um it kind of added a whole other element to the program you know we were getting these lectures we had all of our information, but you also had free reign to go, you know, attend conferences and hear speakers and get more interest information on other things that you might think were cool. Hope that kind of answered it. Yeah, yeah thank just, you so much. Oops, sorry, just to piggyback the program I did, I was working in the European Parliament and ditto everything Chloe said, just on a European level as opposed to an international level. There was also, I'm not speaking for myself, I'm speaking on behalf of our dear friend Kaylee Winston, who is a year older than we are. Um, but she like basically cold called, cold emailed a group at the UN and ended up interning them with them for a summer. Um, so I can definitely try and track down her info for you if you would like that. Um, she's pretty, what she's done is amazing too. So I don't wanna, I don't wanna speak for it, but yeah. That'd be wonderful. Thank you guys so much. Um, hi, I'm Alexis. I'm currently a freshman. Um, and I just kind of wanted to know, so if I remembered correctly, a lot of you guys had the international studies major. And um, I'm currently prospectively thinking about doing double majoring in communications and East Asian studies. I'm studying Japanese. Um, and I just heard so much about the international studies major. Do you think as a person more interested in Asia, if I should just stick with East Asian studies, because I want to get that broader thing. I've heard so many benefits of international studies, but I've also kind of heard a lot of people in international studies are more European based. So do you think that's more of a European based major and it will be more beneficial as someone interested in Asia to stick with East Asian studies or, you know, stuff like that? <laughs> um. So I do believe that, and I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that with the internet, so international studies isn't necessarily one major. There's general international studies, and then there's like three different, uh, a couple different specializations 
of international studies. Um, so when we say international studies, it's kind of the broad um, umbrella term for the department, but, it, but um, Maria just uh, mentioned in the chat, there are different concentrations. I do believe there is, there might be one for East Asian studies. I could be wrong, um, but if there is, um, see what I'm not sure is if you could like minor in international studies with that concentration um, that is something that I can't necessarily speak to because I majored in international studies general. Um, so I think I that a way, but, huh? I'm sorry, I don't think you can minor with a concentration. Right, yeah. Oh. So what I would say is consider the possibility of maybe doing the major, if there's the concentration in sort of the same area that you're interested in, consider the possibility of maybe international studies with that concentration as a major, but then you could also do East Asian studies as a minor instead of dropping it all together. Um, you would have to, and this is following advice from Dr. Rowley earlier, degree audit is your best friend for this. You could literally do a what if situation input, oh, what would I have to take if I majored in these two majors and minored in this? That's literally how I was able to figure out how to do two majors and two minors in the span of four years. Um, so I would say definitely look into that as well. So that way you could see how much overlap there would be within that concentration of international studies and East Asian studies, which I think there might be some. You just have to know, you just have to like see it for yourself to understand, um, you know, what, uh, what the overlap is, if there's any at all. So I'd say definitely check out degree audit to make that decision. But international studies um, is definitely very useful, especially if that's sort of part of what your current career goals are. Um, I know that for me, that's what I wanted to study from the get-go and that's what I stuck with and it was so useful. Um, and even within general international studies, you know, there's just a lot of classes that you can take um, that fulfill the requirements, but also um, fit in with your interests. So that's definitely some, you might have to do some looking around, but I think that there's definitely ways where you could maybe fit everything that you mentioned into the four years of college. You're still a first year, so you definitely have a lot of time to figure this out. So definitely take advantage of the point that you're at. So that way you can do some planning, um, but also be flexible in case you change your mind. Because you might change your mind. Um, I have a friend who has changed his major twice and ended up having to do an extra year. Um, so, you know, definitely, um, you know, use degree audit to plan everything out, but also try to be flexible in the event that you might decide, oh, I want to do something else instead. Yeah, I'm just trying to like figure out if there's a difference, um, do you think okay. that international studies, even with the concentration, is more of like you, if you concentrate on an area, you study that, but then you, in relation to the rest of the world, it puts it like that, whereas East Asian studies is like East Asian countries and their relations. Do you think that's probably the biggest difference? I see you. <laughs> Sarah, here. take this one. So, theory. Um, the international studies major, one of the biggest things I got out of it that I sort of hated at the time, but I'm really super grateful for now, is all of the theory classes that are on like how power works and how world structures are formed and created and continued. And it was less the concentration on a specific region and more general, how do power structures work? And how does this globalized world work? And how can we move globalization into the future? So. Again, I would totally agree with what Alexander said um, in terms of minoring in East Asian studies or having some sort of concentration with that, but don't discount the theoretical methodological aspects of the international studies major. Thank you. Agreed 100%. And then also thank you, Dr. Rowley, I've seen your comments. <laughs> Are there any more questions? Oh, I see one. Um, so how did the study abroad program help with your international studies or PG major? Um, study, I wanna study abroad to strengthen my language skills in Spanish, but I also wanna make sure I still fulfill the requirements and units I need for my majors to graduate on time. 
Um, trying to see because I think, well, yeah, degree audit does help. Um, Sarah had mentioned something about um, international studies requiring a study abroad program. When I started the major, it wasn't a requirement. It was just heavily encouraged that you do it. But when I look in degree audit, you know, it doesn't appear as a requirement for me. Um, could be because maybe the course catalog changed by the time I started it. I started in 2016. But I still think that it's definitely beneficial because of the fact that um, you are required, you are, you are often required to do upper level language courses for international studies anyway. And while you may be able to fulfill them at Ohio Wesleyan, um, I think that definitely studying abroad still helps out with the international studies major, especially if you do something like Sarah did, where you find a program that yes, it is study abroad. So you fulfill that requirement for Spanish, but then it focuses on international studies realm things in the sense that it helps fulfill some requirements for that major um, as well. So it's, that I think helps more with an international studies major than maybe a politics and government major. That's something that, again, degree audit can help you out with, um, but also inquiring um, in with people in the Spanish department as to find, finding, you know, what programs help you out with what your goals are. Um, you know, definitely people in the Spanish department would be your best bet because they know what programs that are out there um, and they'd be able to better match you with something that also focuses on international relations or something within that realm. So that's my best advice for that. Lisa Ho is also a wonderful resource for anybody looking into study abroad. She knows all the programs um, and she can really get you hooked up with whatever works best for your major. All right. Are there any other questions? Okay, well, Thank you guys so much for spending your Saturday with us and for sharing all of your experiences. It has been so helpful um, and I'm so glad you could join us today. Um, again, thank you to the professors um, for organizing this event with me. Um, and thank you for the Palmers for making the Global Scholars Program what it is today. All right, thank you guys so much.